you were in the Project Storm Fury, right? You worked uh, on you worked on that. Really, no. Well, I mean, Storm Fury was going on going on at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, and I worked with some of the researchers that were in Storm yes, Fury. Sir. We collaborated on some work. You, well, what I would like we to we were in the same building, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, uh, what was the? You're fine. We're going. Okay. Yeah, so, so we're with uh, Mr. William Cotton, a famous cloud seeding scientist <laughs> of uh, long time uh, research and stature. Don't make that oh, name sold. oh, but you, you, you <laughs> sir, have a, a very long history of understanding and studying this, and yeah. you, you seem to speak, to speak pretty freely in there. Yeah. Um, uh, Jim Fleming was talking pretty highly about you yesterday, saying you're going to uh -huh. stir the pot, so I didn't right. want to miss it for anything. <laughs> um, I, I saw your uh, your talk at the last conference where you were talking about geoengineering proposals, um, things like doping effluent stacks. Uh, well, that's somebody else. It was it wasn't cool. me. With uh, the jet fuels built for the aerosols and that, uh, UAVs or blimps and that, uh, it's got so much stacks and some reason lowest uh, 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 static cumulus basis and that. Uh, perhaps you could dope those and get the effluent. Well, that's somebody else. That was, it wasn't me. Jim Cotton. Yeah. I, I remember it. Uh, I actually, uh, it was 2008, I believe, was the one that you did. That wasn't the. <laughs> it wasn't the last one. Okay, <laughs> so you're right. 2008, I believe, you had one, and you talked about um, uh, doped effluents of uh, smokestacks. These were geoengineering proposals you were going through, and uh, one of the conversations was about doped jet fuel. Uh -huh. um, this is a conversation that I, I had a talk with uh, Dr. Rangasai Halthori. He's an aviation climate change research initiative. Right. And he made a statement to me that really boggled uh, my audience. And yeah. maybe you could give some clarification to this. I don't know if you can. <laughs> um, but they said that they wanted to make clouds by day, none by night. And Ulrich Schumann from the ICAO said at the 2010 colloquium on contrail mitigation that they wanted to make less warming and more cooling contrails. Uh -huh predictable for operational control. Right. And then Ulrich Schumann went on to create the Contrail Cirrus Prediction Tool, right. which is gonna be rolled yeah. into the Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit for uh -huh. FAA stuff. So the question I would probably have for you is, you're talking about pollution size aerosols and their effects on climate and clouds. And obviously there's a large body of right. people on the internet who are concerned about cloud creation on a daily basis over right. their houses. Yeah. Um, why do you think there's such a disconnect between the scientific community on being able to discuss openly inadvertent weather modification like serious cloud production from airline emissions, um, but they're talking about literally geoengineering the sky at this point, that the FAA's position is clouds by day, none by night. Uh -huh. That Ulrich Schumann says less warming, more cooling. So th their solution is not to stop making clouds. Their solution is to make them cool the planet. Right. So if yeah. that's the case, that is geoengineering. Right. So whether it was in the past or it doesn't matter any longer, are the conspiracy theorists right when Chuck Long from CRES is saying aircraft emissions are accidentally geoengineering the planet with a subvisual yeah, ice really age? small. I mean, there's been numerous papers mm -hmm. on that going back, I don't know, 25, 30 years. And the, the effects, they can see a signal in a you know, diurnal cycle, things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. but it's so small. Yeah. That has, you know, somebody asked that question earlier. Uh, and it has a very small signal. Yeah, it, it, see, and that's why that's one of my concerns is, you, you know about Dr. Alan Robach when he said yeah, the, the CIA yeah, was, called him. Up. Yeah, I tried to get to him earlier this morning. Yeah. I was yeah. feeling a little under the weather. Right. Um, but he said that the CIA called him and said, if Russia was messing with the weather over America, would we know? And he said, probably. Uh -huh. But at last yeah. year's weather modification conference, Diane Seidel from NOAA said pretty definitively, no, we cannot tell the difference between man-made clouds and God-made clouds. So the other question I would ask for you is this. Being that you know what you know about weather modification, the history of it, that we know that in 1978, weaponized weather was banned. It was the right. Environmental yeah. Modification Convention. Right. Um, that it we're really- out of the Vietnam era. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, we're, we're really getting into a situation now where I don't think there's a lot of accountability and any kind of transparency at all. So what we, the public, are trying to get is a little more honesty right. from the climate scientists about when they're modifying the sky when not. And we can't even get honesty about 
something as simple as cloud grease. Um, yeah. That it, it, they're making all of these efforts to control these clouds so that they can get an outcome they want, no, a they're, cooler they're, planet. They're basically just investigating the feasibility, you know, and they're gonna, finding it so complicated that they can't even determine. That, Aerosol cloud interaction, greatest yeah. unknown in climate science. Yeah. So I spoke at the EPA hearing in 2015 on aircraft emissions, and I said exactly that, that I would be more concerned about cirrus cloud creation than CO2 coming out of planes uh -huh. because there were statements like that 2008 volcano, that E3 AWACS 5,000 times the radiated force of all the CO2 coming out of planes. Uh -huh. So what I see personally as a researcher is, that the scientific community is greatly concerned about serious cloud creation, but is failing miserably at explaining that to the public. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. I, I don't get into that. So. Well, I, I think yeah. that your talk on pollution size aerosols really has an effect on this discussion because... No, not really, because I'm talking about convective clouds, okay. uh, entirely different cloud species. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not a scientist. Right. And I know that you are, and I would love to contact you by email, maybe shoot you some questions after the conference. Uh -huh. But um, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us real quick. Okay. Right. And uh, th yeah. keep up the good work and Thank keep you. stirring the pot. Right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> if this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember... It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.